Hello friends, James Stevenson here with a video about Jim Chanos Fund, Kinecos Associates, shutting the place down. They are closing the doors forever, uh, having incinerated almost all of their assets under management. They have shut down before they go all the way to zero. Uh, Jim Chanos, many times over the years, was hating hard on Tesla, saying that Tesla was a zero. Tesla was going to zero. He said many times he thought the equity was worthless uh, and couldn't have been more wrong about that and lost billions of dollars of his own wealth, uh, shorting Tesla, among other companies, that uh, did not work out that well. But this is also an episode of Breakfast with Loki. Let's check in with my co-host Loki and see if he's interested in getting breakfast. Yes. There you go, buddy. Oh, what do you think? What do you think? There you go. Okay. And if he's interested in coming over and eating breakfast right now, he will. And if not, uh, you can still keep an eye on what he's doing in the Loki cam right here below me as I turn my attention to this tweet that I sent out yesterday upon hearing the news from Stock Talk Weekly that uh, Jim Chanos fame short seller who shorted Enron and Tesla announced he is officially shutting down his hedge fund and returning investor cash. His fund fell from $6 billion in 2008, I think it was $7 billion in 2009, to just $200 million under management as of last quarter. $200 million as a successful hedge fund manager would describe it. $0.2 billion was uh, the last reported amount for Kinecos Associates. Uh, and Stock Talk Weekly replied to me, Yup, in an alternate universe, Chanos is smiling ear to ear. About what? About what I said up here. If Jim had invested just one of the $6 billion he had in Tesla, if he had bought shares long and just held them, Kinecos assets under management would have grown to at least $200 billion, but probably more due to removing such a huge chunk of shares from the float permanently. So when you buy shares, you're buying them from the people who believe the least in the stock, the people willing to accept the lowest amount of money for their shares. That's who you buy shares from, right? So if he had bought that many shares... Uh, then after a lot of dilution later, he would have owned less than half the company. At IPO time, Tesla was valued at $1.7 billion, so $1 billion would have been more than half the company at that moment. Uh, and then Tesla kept issuing shares after that to employees and directors and uh, to raise cash uh, from the equity markets. Uh, yeah, and I replied in this simulation, Jim blocked me years ago for pointing out his flawed thinking about Tesla's stock compensation. So uh, some folks don't know that uh, Jim Chanos had a secret uh, Twitter account. It wasn't that secret, but also not that many people knew, or not, not everyone knew about it. Uh, I've got that article pulled up over here. Maybe I should zoom in here some more. Uh, so this article from 2021, talking about how poorly Kinecos Associates was doing at the time. Uh, you can pause this and read through it if you want. I have a lot more material lined up on Jim Chanos uh, to finish this one. Hey, anybody out there uh, who can confirm if Luis Carruthers or their boot is the uh, secret Twitter account of Jim Carruthers? Let me know. Uh, that's the other short seller, uh, ma major short seller, mentioned in this article. That's just a, a wild guess on my part with nothing to support it. But if you have support for that, leave me a reply in the comments below and let me know. Uh, but the next thing that I wanted to do was click through to Stock Talk Weekly and then see if there's any replies here from people we know. Uh, so, Teslonymous here, please check on your neighborhood Tesla Q friends. They're probably crushed by their idol giving it all up. Uh, not surprised Chanos is shutting his fund down. If he was a smart short seller, he would know the number one rule 
don't bet against Elon. Uh, that's the rule you'll be reminded of frequently if you follow Steve Hamel on Twitter. Uh, Steve Hamel 16 if you don't know. Uh, I know there's a reply here from somebody that I want to get to. Uh, and I may have to take desperate measures if I can't find where that reply is. I thought I had it lined up right here. Interesting. Okay, so I'll just go here, and then I'll go here and scroll up to it. So, oh, it was a different tweet that Elon replied to. Jim Chanos two months ago, we're short Tesla, and we just think it's ridiculously overvalued. So he is still hating hard on Tesla today. If you're worried that my video... Uh, ought to be focused on people who are hating hard on Tesla today as opposed to years ago. Uh, we've got recent information here uh, from Jim Chanos uh, saying he thinks Tesla is still ridiculously overvalued. That's hating. That's hating hard on Tesla. Uh, oh, so they were retweeting themselves here, and this is the tweet Elon didn't reply to, and this is the tweet he did reply to, saying... I did warn the shorts that this would happen. And if you're wondering when Elon reminded the shorts that this was going to happen, he warned them frequently, <laughs> frequently over the years, n numerous times. Uh, so I replied, yes, repeatedly, and you weren't subtle about it. Uh, so here's one of the most uh, notable examples. Oh, and a uh, short burn of the century coming soon. Flamethrowers should arrive just in time. May the 4th, uh, 2018. May the 4th be with you. Looks like sooner than expected, the sheer magnitude of short carnage will be unreal. If you're short, I suggest tiptoeing quietly to the exit. Uh, Muddy Waters Research at Muddy Waters RE replied to him, Actually, VW owns the Short Burn of the Century Award 2008. If you keep focusing on fantasies of stock market schadenfreude... VW's Audi brand will probably end up owning much of Tesla's EV market share, too. Even for a super capable guy like you, priorities have to matter. So Muddy Waters Research, a short seller, uh, poking Elon with a stick here, hoping to get a response. Uh, and Elon says, this will be bigger. Uh, somebody said, just for the record, you're referring to the not a flamethrower, right? And Elon said, yes, definitely not. Uh, and our buddy Frederick Lambert, Lambert, uh, French-Canadian Fred Lambert, is a short burn of the century as bad as a tsunami of hurt. What the heck is Fred talking about? Well, lucky for you, I have pulled up uh, what Fred was referencing. It's not in that video, it's in this video, which I will play for you now. They literally hit the ceiling on, on the short position. The shorts are, are in it to the hilt. And you um, believe they are 100% wrong? You know, I, I, I think we're, it's very unwise to be shorting Tesla. Uh, I mean, it's just very unwise. I think there is there's a tsunami of hurt coming for the, for the short, those holding a short, short position. Okay. It's going to be very, very unpleasant. I advise people to exit <laughs> while there is time. Tell us All what right. this is. So Elon's South African accent was a little thicker back then in 2012, more than 10 years ago, uh, before that first really big leg up in uh, Tesla stock in 2013 happened. Elon Musk had warned about a tsunami of hurt. What kind of warning was Jim Chanos giving out uh, over the years? Well, I've picked one example that I remembered. Uh, this one is from five years ago, so before the next huge run-up in Tesla stock valuation. What was Jim Chanos' advice for people considering Tesla stock ownership? One of the things that, that's just sort of stunning, and I, I think there was a piece of news overnight, uh, the head of autopilot left, is the, uh, is the accelerating rate of executive departures. And one of the things that, that I've learned in, in my zillion years of, of selling short is that probably the number one sign of impending problems is mass executive departures. I don't mean one or two people. I mean 30 or 40. You're talking about rats leaving a secret uh, ship. Well, I'll let you say that, not me, but, but yes. 
I mean, this is but this yes. is becoming a torrent at Tesla, and we keep this sort of. A I'm not gonna say it's rats deserting a sinking ship, but yes. The list that uh, is somewhat well known, the Tesla right. executive departure list, and it's now two pages, single space for the last 18 months. Uh, no word yet on how long Jim Chanos's list of executive departures single space got before he lost all of his money. But look, for a very, very long time, investors have given Elon yeah. Musk license to effectively lose money as he tries to build market share, right? right. That's, that's been the model, if you will. Right. I think actually investors understood that that was what the deal was. They might have expected certain things to happen sooner than they did. Right. They clearly had lots of production problems right. along the way. Um, you've gotten caught up in this, obviously, because I think you thought this was going to fall much sooner than it has. Well, Tesla's actually been an okay short relative to this market. I mean, it's, it's gone nowhere in four years. Hey, bring um, this up. How long have you been short Tesla? So we've been shorted four years. Yeah. <laughs> so um, And so this stock, you know, as the market has kept moving higher, was in the high 200s in 2014. It's been volatile, but it, it really hasn't made any progress. So. Uh, that's one interesting little observation. Number two, when we started shorting Tesla, the 2020 earnings estimate was $20 a share. It's now uh, down to about 4 or $5 a share. So the problem is, is that this has been pushed out and pushed out and pushed out. Uh, I'll just remind you that Tesla stock has split since the time of this interview twice, once five for one and once three for one. So you got to multiply the stock prices by 15 uh, and you got to divide the earnings per share by 15. But the bigger problem has is that Porsche is coming. How expensive are the big, I'll say that again. You think Porsche is coming. With the I should have just said divide on both of those. I should have said divide the stock price by 15, divide the earnings per share by 15. You multiply the shares by 15, then anything you do per share you have to divide by 15. Uh, to put it into modern context. By the way, Andrew Ross Sorkin here was trying to help Chanos out, trying to say, hey, the people buying Tesla stock know that they're going to be losing money this year in 2018. And they're fine with that. They want Tesla to increase production. They want Tesla to increase sales. They want to see an S-curve of EV adoption being led by Tesla as the market leader, as the, the company people think about when they think about what kind of electric vehicle they should buy. And they're fine if in the short term Tesla loses some money in order to make a lot more money for them over their investment horizon. Their time horizon might be 10 or 20 years, right? They're fine buying at today's very low prices uh, for uh, the gains they can make over a very long period of time. And uh, Jim Chanos was not having it. He thought Tesla was a top-to-bottom fraud uh, and was going to go bankrupt and uh, pay off his uh, short position. Their, their own car. Porsche's coming with the Mission E. And, and, and so is Jaguar with and the so, And so is Audi with the e-tron. And these are, these are amazing-looking cars. And, and what Tesla did was made EVs sexy. Mm -hmm. and, and I've always said that. Elon got the Model S out. Electric vehicles. Right, electric vehicles. But the Model S is seven years old. And, and now the big boys are coming. And they're coming with sexy looking cars at the same price point with better features, faster cars, great styling. And so what was unique for Tesla is no longer unique. Okay, so, but then the question is, when does the market... All right, so there we see Jim Chanos articulating the now famously wrong, the competition is coming, bare thesis. Get, decide they're no longer going to provide capital under this business model, which is we provide you capital for this long-term thing that we think is going to happen. When is I, that? What's the tipping I have, point? I have no idea. It, it should, at some point, investors are going to see the capital as being incinerated, right? I mean, they're just providing capital, and he has to come back to market and providing capital, and it's gone. At some point, and you don't think there's any point where you look and is there, is there anything encouraging where you said, you know what, maybe they're maybe they're getting finally closer to a, to a turning point here. I think actually it's getting worse. They they talked about being a leader in autopilot. They're now a laggard in autopilot. Their technology is behind everybody else's. They're selling behind who? The, uh, they're behind GM, for example, who's going to be on the show shortly. We can talk to GM about that. The cruise technology is well ahead of Tesla's, and uh, they're ahead of, they're behind Audi and VW. 
and they had behind the Waymo. But so, so what's the cost? I'm just smiling through here, realizing that Jim Chanos says everything Mark B. Spiegel says, just diplomatically. The, what's the cost of carry, though, when you're shorting the cost of borrow? I mean, is it is it is it is it extreme on Tesla from no, a short well, perspective? Right, as you know, for most short positions, you earn income. Okay. And Tesla, it's now down to negative one or two percent. Okay, so it's it's not yeah. it's not it's not egregious. No. Is it is there? The, the difference between the two being that uh, Jim Chanos had about $7 billion to invest, and Mark B. Spiegel, I think, never had any more than $7 million to invest, or as a successful hedge fund manager would say, $0.007 billion. There's 100, 100, almost 80 million fully diluted shares here. When we look at also the ownership, Elon Musk, as Andrew said, this is kind of odd only because this is kind of a cult company where it's got this larger than life leader in your history. When you look at your shorts, Jim, you think, OK, these are sort of fundamentally bad accounting stories or there's yeah. something funny going on. Is there a is there a headline risk for you in that you've got this sort of cult of personality behind the company, which he could try to pull a, a rabbit out of a hat at any time. Well, of course, but but again, the only two companies I've ever seen in our history with an executive departure list like this was more recently a company called Valiant Pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. and then a company uh, in Houston called Enron. Okay, and, so, but do you think, okay, see. So so there, there's his uh, other bare thesis that he wanted to come back to, is the executive departures list. If the executive departures list gets long enough, and if I compare it against enough uh, frauds, then it's guilt by association. And I can just say, well, uh, it, it has to be a fraud because executives can't take the heat and get out of the kitchen. You just so let, me finish, let me finish. Go ahead. Let okay. me finish. And so both of those were led by cult-like leaders who had change the paradigm in their industries. Valiant in pharmaceuticals, Enron in energy, right? But let's be careful here because both of those companies ultimately, there was another word involved, which was fraud. fraud yeah. yeah. Do you look at Tesla and believe it's a fraud? I think that Mr. Musk has crossed the Rubicon in terms of making statements to investors that he might rue later. Like what? Well, for example, uh, he made a, a rollout last year of the Semi and the Roadster. He said the Roadster would be available in 2020 and the Semi will be uh, entering production next year. I don't think either of those are going to happen. There was a lawsuit filed. Well, he was right, but those are examples of Tesla being late, not Tesla being a fraud. Recently, uh, which actually took uh, testimony from 11 former executives who said in the lawsuit complaint, you can find it, that they all told Elon that there was no way they were going to make the production numbers of the Model 3. They told him this, and he went out and made public statements. That's another uh, common bear refrain is, oh, these lawsuits are going to bring Tesla down, and then Tesla ends up winning almost all of the lawsuits. These are kind of big things. I thought that's kind of what his, his MO has been all along, but right? To do, do things that people say are impossible. You only get to do that in a bull market, Becky. When the stock starts going down, uh, people actually sue you. That might be a violation of... People sue you, yeah. Uh, so here's the thing about being a multi-billion dollar company. You're going to get sued. The end. If <laughs> if you're especially a U.S.-based multi-billion dollar company, people are going to sue you because they want your money. <laughs> they want to take some of your money. So there's going to be lawsuits. You're going to have to have a legal department to fight these battles in court uh, because... People are going to try to take your money, and they're going to try to get a judge to uh, rule in their favor, and they'll find whatever excuse uh, they think they can win on to bring charges against you uh, in court. Of, of Reg FD, if true, but it's not the F word. It's not right, fraud. It's not fraud. You, you I didn't think... say fraud. I didn't say fraud. I said you may be making material misstatements and, and maybe may be misleading investors. Remember, when he does these things, he raises money. Mm -hmm. He raises deposits, and you cannot raise money. Uh, you're not, just to be clear, you're not taking issue with the actual numbers that you're receiving on a quarterly basis that, that investors actually can see. Well, there are some problems. I mean, for example, the way they report gross margins. They report gross margins in a way that no other auto OEM does. Every other auto manufacturer includes R&D expense and certain other things uh, like, like service costs and warranty costs 
in their gross margin. Well, every other automaker has a financing division and every other automaker uh, sells to dealerships. There's a lot of things that are different about Tesla's uh, financial statements than other companies. They're not going to be a direct corollary because Tesla took a different approach when designing their business model, and it's been working out in their favor over the years. Tesla does not. So it inflates Tesla's gross margins by as much as 10 full points. So when Tesla says our target gross margin is 25 percent, it's really on an apples to apples with other, every other auto. But they don't have the traditional dealer points. or service network. Though. Right. So what's really funny about him calling it out as 10 points then is the more Tesla grew their sales, the more Tesla grew their top line, the smaller research and development became as a percentage of total revenue. And then you have folks like Gordon Johnson out there saying it must be fraud because the research and development expenses keep getting reported lower and lower as a percent of revenue. Uh, he's just not realizing or being disingenuous about economies of scale driving operating leverage. Right. Right. That, so they, the problem. So you can't make the apples to apples comparison with other cars. Of course you can. R&D is still the same in R&D. Right. And, and warranty expense is still the same. So there is, and they have to provide a supercharger network, which, which others don't, right? So How does that work? Uh, warranty fraud is another fun Tesla Q talking point. It's hard to get people excited about warranty accounting uh, because nobody cares <laughs> except Tesla Q, I guess. Uh, but when you look at the numbers and study them, independently, as a publication for warranty professionals did. I've tweeted about this and made videos about it before. Uh, they found Tesla is actually accruing more towards warranty expenses, and the claims against those warranties are less. Uh, and the other one is, oh, but Tesla's just recording it as goodwill. Well, finish the business term. It's not just goodwill, it's goodwill expense. Goodwill expense. Uh, so either it gets recorded as warranty expense or it gets recorded as goodwill expense. Either way, it's expense, and it comes out before the profit line. So anytime you see somebody saying Tesla using goodwill instead of warranty uh, to cover repairs on vehicles is inflating their profits, they couldn't be more wrong. Either it gets recorded as goodwill expense or it gets recorded as warranty expense. Either way, it's expense with accounting rules are there accounting rules that would dictate that one way or the other or there there's latitude but again industry standard is that everybody generally does it the way that that i indicated and and tesla doesn't so it means their sgna and operating expenses are higher than everybody else's but they keep pointing people to the gross margin as as a some holy grail. Now, having said that, their gross margin is somewhere around 15% mm -hmm. as reported. Right. Um, so it's lower. Now, anyway. you have a theory, by the way, which is the theory is you think that Elon Musk is going to leave the company. I do. I think he's going to actually uh, leave as CEO. I think he's going to move over SpaceX. And I think that, that if you read his compensation package that was approved by the shareholders, it specifically said he keeps the compensation package if he remains as non-executive chairman. And, a, and someone else becomes CEO. He has to be, though, I believe, the chief product officer. So it'd be yes. very hard to... Well, he better be, because everybody else is leaving, Andrew. No, no, but don't you, don't you think it would be very hard for him to leave the company? I think that, that it would be very easy for him to stay non-executive chairman and chief product officer. Uh, but, uh, but I think his, his, uh, his desire is really to go over to SpaceX from everything I've seen. You saw the Rolling Stone uh, interview with him in November. All the glossy pictures were at SpaceX, not Tesla. And besides, Mars doesn't have an ext extradition treaty with the U.S. Hey there. Yeah, there you go. All right. So that's, uh, that's Jim Chanos hating hard on Elon Musk, discounting Elon's capability to be CEO of multiple companies at a time. Uh, little did he know how many companies <laughs> Elon Musk would be running in 2023. All right, uh, that is my video for today. So with that, I will check back in with Loki, uh, who has decided to keep snoozing in bed instead of eating his breakfast so far, but he'll eat it later. And with that, I'll remind you to click the like button if you liked this video. That way other people can find the video and watch it. 
when the algorithm recommends it to them. But uh, if you have any thoughts on this video that you want others to read, you can leave them in the comments below. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already and you're watching me on YouTube, you can do that for free. I'll leave a link over here. And uh, I appreciate everyone who supports me on Patreon or on Twitter or by joining my YouTube channel as my executive producers Kathy Kitchler and RebellionAir.com did. And I'll see you in the next one.